gives this woman to be married to this man? together. We do pray that you would oversee their hearts, that you would fill their household with love and joy and faith and the rich blessings of heaven. We pray, Father, that all good things would come their way. We pray that, Father, that as we talk about these sacred and wonderful things, that you would deepen our understanding of them, that this might be a day to be remembered, to be thought of deeply. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. On behalf of Sam and Kiana, I just want to welcome you and thank you for coming to their wedding. And uh, before I talk to them about their vows and they take their vows, I would live, like to talk to you first to let you know that you're not merely spectators at a wedding, you're witnesses at a wedding. You're going to be witnessing vows. And a vow is a promise that is actually made to God. And we make vows because we recognize that that which we're about to embark upon will have times of difficulty. We don't make vows to do things that are going to be easy. We make vows because they know, we know, there are going to be times that are tough. You're going to hear that. You're going to be the witnesses. A good witness is somebody who remembers what they hear, they remember what they see, and they're willing to testify. So your roles, our roles in the lives of Sam and Kiana from this day forth will be to be living reminders of the vows that we hear them make. Be, be, be good friends to them. Love them. Help them to be who on this wonderful day they're saying they want to be. A faithful, loving husband and a faithful, loving wife. So that is the first charge. It goes to all of us. To love them the way they want to be loved. Well, before we take the vows, let's talk a little bit about the vows. Because these words tend to be very abstract, so let's dial it in a little bit so we actually know what the promises are. Some of the vows are bilateral, some of them are unilateral, some of them are unique to the husband, unique to the wife, some of them are both husband and wife. You're going to promise Sam and Kiana that you're going to love them. If there was a word that's lost all its meaning in our current culture, it's that word love. So let's, let's go deeper into that word love. Because we have one word in the English for love. But in the Bible and the Greek, there's a bunch of different words for love. There's a, an agape love. It's the kind of love that God has for us. It's the kind of love we're supposed to have for others. And you should have that love for one another. But you're also going to have that love for others. There's also a philos love. It's a, a brotherly, sisterly love. It's an affectionate love. It's the kind of love that you have. Let's cast the characters. <laughs> it's, a, it's something special. And you should have that love for one another, but you also will have that for others. But there's an eros love. It's a passionate love. And that love belongs only to one another. So I'm charging before God and these witnesses that if you would sense that Eros passionate love encroaching upon you in regard to any other person that you turn and you flee from it, it belongs only to each other. You're also going to promise to cherish one another. That word literally means to keep warm, like, like eggs in a nest. 
that of all the things, Sam, that God has given to you in this life, and same with you, Kiana, of all your relationships, of all your goals, of all your aspirations, of all your possessions, however you want to classify it, of all the things that God has put into your life, nothing comes before each other. You are to be absolutely number one to each other, even when kids come. The greatest thing you can do for your kids is show them how much you love each other. It builds such a strong household, fosters such security there. Now, love's got to be number one. Ken, I've only got to know you over the last year or so. I've known him pretty much since the day one. I have a pretty good idea of what number two is. I don't know what it is for you, but I will tell you this about number two. Number two wants to be number one. Don't let number two be number one. Keep number two a distant second. Take the time to, to go out in six months from now, in a year from now, two years from now, and, and have dinner and look across the table and ask your wife if you are making her feel like she's the most important thing in your life. And really listen to what she has to say. And Kiana, you do that as well. It, it should be the goal of your lives. I think the greatest expression of faithfulness you can have to Christ is your faithfulness to one another. You're also going to promise to honor one another. That word goes all the way back into the Old Testament and in the Hebrew. It literally means something that weighs a lot. It's a weighty word, a very concrete word. And um, what it really means is that you hold each other's opinion in high esteem that when Kiana speaks, her words are of great value to you. That when Sam speaks, that you're looking at him going, I'm very, very interested in what you have to say. Even though sometimes you really aren't going to feel that way. That's why we're making a vow. On those days when I feel dismissive, I am committed to not be dismissive. That, that when I see Sam, Kiana, through your eyes, I see a woman who you hold in high esteem, who you lift up. Nothing you say, nothing you do should ever be degrade or humiliate or belittle her. Just the opposite. I should get the opinion that you hold her in high esteem. And same thing with you, Kiana. That, that when I see Sam through your eyes, I, I see a prince. It should make us a little sick. <laughs> In a good way. You're going to promise to be faithful to one another. And in old weddings, they used to say, I pledge thee my troth. That's where we get the word betrothal. It's where we also get the word truth. And I think it is the ultimate measurement of who you are as a Christian in terms of our behavior on this earth is our faithfulness to one another. Those vows go both ways. But Sam, there are some vows that are unique to the husband. The husband is called to love his wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. And we know that Jesus died for his bride. But the dying isn't merely that dying that we might associate with risking your life the way clearly Jesus took his, had his life taken to save us. But Jesus didn't merely die for his bride. He lived for his bride. He, he, the whole incarnation, the whole idea that he was here was for his bride. So you are to live and you are to die for your bride. That you are the head of the household, as Jesus is the head of the church. But Jesus said, I did not come to be served, but to serve. He uses that leadership to serve. You are going to take responsibility. You've really found quite a gem here, haven't you? Yes, you are very fortunate. And Keanu, you're looking at a guy who's a, he's a big man. <laughs> <laughs> and his heart is incommensurately bigger for his size. He's <clears throat> got a heart in there the size of a basketball, and I think you know that. You are to love this woman as Christ loved the church and wash her with the water of the word. You are to make sure she's taken care of. 
You are the protector. You are to provide for her. She should be able to feel like she can come to you first for her needs, physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs. That's the environment that you're promising to create, the same way we feel like we can go to Jesus. It's a high calling to love your wife the way Christ loved the church. You need to get up every day and, and be committed to do that, even though the day before you feel like you didn't do as good a job as you could. Don't be discouraged. You commit to it. And Kiana, the bride is told to put herself under the care of her husband to trust as the church is called to trust your savior you're called to trust your husband and as great as he is i mean there's going to be days when he's just not going to be loving you the way christ loved the church you know he's just because he's not jesus but you are to never fall prey to the fear of going on i don't want to trust him let him know every day you wake up, you look across, you are my man. I am trusting you. I'm putting myself under your care. Let him feel that. And I have a strange suspicion that he'll live up to that. Don't draw back from that. The, the picture here is the gospel. The husband loving, living for and dying for his bride, and the bride trusting. And I um, have little doubt that Many, many years from now, I don't know how many, 60, 70, 80 years from now, at the end of the day, that if you're committed to that, that your marriage will be everything that God has wanted it to be. That's right. Father God in heaven, we do pray that, uh, I, I do pray for Sam and Kiana, that as they embark upon this new season of joy and wonder and excitement, that you, as Father, continue to form. Christ in them, that they might be thoroughly sanctified by this wonderful union that you're bringing together. So bless them, Father, as they prepare to take their vows. May, Father, by your Spirit, these words reach deep into their hearts and help them be strong in them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Sammy, you ready to take your vows? Why don't you a little closer to each other? Do you, Sam, take Kiana to be your lawfully wedded wife? Do you promise before God and these witnesses that you will love her, honor her, cherish her, and be faithful to her? Do you promise to look beyond yourself and keep her interests first, to provide physically, emotionally, and spiritually? Do you vow to be a faithful husband in sickness and in health, in plenty and in want, better or for worse. Do you promise to thank your God always for the gift he has given you in this woman? And do you vow to uphold these promises as long as you both shall live? Do you, Kiana, take Sam to be your lost and better husband? Do you promise before God and these witnesses that you will love him, honor him, cherish him, be faithful to him, and put yourself under his care? Do you promise to go to him first for your physical, emotional, and spiritual nourishment? Do you vow to be a faithful wife in sickness and in health, in plenty and in want, for better or for worse? Do you promise to thank your God always for the gift he has given you in this man? And do you vow to uphold this promise as long as you both shall live? Let us pray. Father in heaven, vows have been taken, and we do pray knowing that you search throughout the earth to strengthen the hearts of those who are fully committed to you. And Sam and Kiana express their commitment to you and their commitment to one another. Bless them, Father. Keep them strong in it, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now we're going to sing. And uh, I'm... I, my wife and I were talking about how wonderful it was that David got to me. Those of you who don't know, I think everybody probably knows David was so sick. And when I would go visit that over to bring communion, Ken was there pretty much every time. But what a blessing for him.
to have gotten to know you uh, and to know that, well, I think you saw it coming. You guys would be together. David wrote some amazing songs, songs that I think should probably end up in the Trinity hymnal if anybody wants to take on that task. One of the songs that we continue to sing as a church, we're going to sing now. It is on your bulletin. Please rise and let us sing this song together. symbol of my love for you. I will thank my God always that he has given you to me. This ring will be an ever-present reminder of the vows I have made this day. With it I pledge to be your wife as long as we both shall live. Father in heaven, we do pray that every time Sam and Kim reach down 
and feel these rings upon their fingers, they will be reminded of this wonderful day when vows were taken and they came together, Father. Bless them, pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> And now, by the power vested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I pronounce that you are husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. <clears throat> it is my great pleasure to introduce to you for the first time Mr. and Mrs. Sam and Kiana Kenner.